Hi everybody, uh, we have started the topics in micro foundations of macroeconomics and we are covering now the two periods model and in two periods model, models we have also covered uh, some aspects about the I would say basic foundations of two period model where we defined the utility preference of the representative consumer and also we worked out with the uh, with the Bayard constraint. And compared to one period model, the two period model Bayard constraint looks uh, um, more appealing because we are not just taking into account the current period, but we are also taking into account the future period. So I had also given in the last class uh, some examples. Uh, one example we had discussed that how we can drive and the we had also e examined that how we, we can derive the, the budget constraint from the two simple period expositions and also we have tried to understand that what happens if we have uh, some level of or what happens when we try to optimize the consumption of this representative consumer. So, are we going to uh, optimize with the simple norm of the calculus or we are since it involves some certain time periods. So, here we are also taking into account the time period during optimization and then we derive the dynamic optimization condition, the Euler condition and then we also discussed in detail about how we can uh, further uh, apply this technique to understand the the consumption behavior of the consumer not only in the current period but also in the future period in the last session we also derived the the saving function with the help of the two period buyer constraint and we also try to understand that how this saving function can be derived so saving which is basically the uh, income minus consumption so i hope it is clear uh, to all of you and now we will be moving ahead with the new dimension. I remember in the last uh, session we also had explored uh, to some extent the macro dimensions of the consumption. So, what do you mean by macro dimensions? I am talking about MACRO not MICRO. So, when I talk about macro dimensions of consumption then the, the concepts like uh, Keynesian concept like marginal propensity to consume and how do we measure the change in consumption due to change in income either the current period, future period, what happens when we try to, to uh, adjust the current period consumption with respect to the, the interest rate. So, these dynamics are also important because on these dynamics you can easily understand the behavior of representative agent. So, in, in the one period model it was easier to examine. So, we will be discussing it further with that uh, intention in mind let us start. So, here the reference remains same the I would request all of you to follow the Stephen D. Williamson book and the Eric Seams because these two authors are important and for two periods Sanjay K. Chuk also has very good technical analysis. So, that also gives a good reference. Now, coming to the aspects, so we had derived the Bayard constraint in this way and then we had gone by having the, the tangency condition. So, tangency, so here is was the, the Bayard constraint, here was the, the saving function that we had derived in the last example that we did. Now, we were talking about the consumption function. So, Euler condition that we derive that your current consumption or marginal utility of current consumption is equivalent to the beta multiplied by the marginal utility of future consumption uh, we, and then you have 1 plus r the reward that you have for future consumption both are equal and consumers can decide about. But that will not be regarded as a macro indicator or the Euler equation cannot become the consumption function. For consumption function we had also derived to some extent this particular part. So, we had defined the consumption function with respect to C, Y t, Y t plus 1 and R t and here Y t. So, it means that the consumption it depends upon the current income, consumption depends upon the future income and consumption depends upon the rate of interest. Once we have C as a function, then here we have the income and the interest in income that we try to measure. So, here if you take into account 
del C T means rate of change in current consumption due to change in Y T rate of change in the future con uh, current consumption due to change in future income you expect that uh, future income is going to increase. So, based on that you try to adjust the current consumption similarly the reward the interest that we are having. Once I have this dimension then can I get this uh, this analysis. So, I think we had done this part and we had derived the this expression so, right. So, in the last class we did that here C t is equal to 1 upon 1 plus beta y t y t plus 1 1 plus beta upon 1 plus r t. Now, this particular expression became very important because then behavioral coefficient that we have. So, here if you just try to see, so if you substitute the uh, in the lifetime budget constraint that we derived, if you substitute the other condition here, then we ultimately arrive it uh, on this, this platform. So, we get this expression. So, C t is equal to 1 upon 1 plus beta y t. Uh, and y t plus 1 upon 1 plus beta 1 plus r t. So, once I have this derivation then it becomes interesting. So, here you have the current consumption. It, uh, so, rate of change in current consumption due to change in income current income I am saying I uh, here it is y t. If you go for partial differentiation of this then it becomes 1 upon 1 plus beta and once I have 1 plus beta then since the value is greater than 0, which means that if we have a beta, if I am mentioning the, the value beta, so as beta increases, right, your MPC comes down, which means that your current consumption will come down, you have more drive for future. So, here this is what it leads to. So, in normal textbook, if you are reading uh, Q or, or Don Bush Fisher or any book, you simply derive the rate of change in consumption due to change in income and then you also have the the linear chart right and then you mentioned that the slope is this but with two period dimensions you can add dimension to this understanding which means that this uh, since there we do not talk in detail about the intertemporal behavior of the representative agent we just mentioned that okay this is the change in consumption due to change in income but here we are trying to add the dimension of the intertemporal. So, this intertemporal dimension gives you better understanding about the MPC that how marginal propensity to consume if you try to put it in the framework of two period model or you can also extend it to n, n infinite period. So, how it looks like. So, that becomes the beauty of this course that you can enhance your understanding about basic theories of macroeconomics with simple uh, mathematical formulations. So, delta C t upon delta y t 1 upon 1 plus beta. So, once we have beta increasing your MPC comes down and once in beta is lower then MPC goes up. So, this is the understanding which means that you give less preference to future than the uh, uh, then the current which means that current period becomes more important. So, here uh, we mentioned about similarly if I go for partial differentiation of delta C t with delta y t plus 1. So, here it becomes 1 upon 1 plus beta then here we have 1 plus r t and which is greater. So, if you take the partial derivation of this so this expression you get. So, 1 plus beta 1 plus r t. So, this is what we have here we have delta C t upon delta R t. So, here we have 1 uh, upon 1 plus beta 1 plus R t square because if you just take into account R t here because here you have the R t. So, this is the solution that you get and this becomes an interesting scenario that with rate of interest you have inverse relationship, inverse relationship of current consumption with respect to change in uh, current rate of interest which means that if you have interest rate change. So, if interest rate is high you look for less consumption because you tend to save more to get more uh, reward. So, maybe in future period you will have better reward. So, if the rate of interest in the current period is higher you tend to save more and this higher reward is giving you an incentive or some kind of opportunity cost for you to either go for more consumption in the current period or save more in the current period and then you consume more in the future. So, that the so here it is clear that for consumption the current period income and the future period incomes have 
reinforcing effect which means that these two are having a direct relationship whereas with interest rate it is inverse relationship and this interest rate matters a lot. So, once we discuss more about how uh, you when you decide about whether you should go for more of consumption or less of, of uh, savings or you decide about more of saving less of consumption. So, this uh, analysis becomes important when you are trying to see the scenarios where you have rate of interest increase. So, whether this is also having the dimension that we discussed in the first uh, one period model where we, we analyze in detail the role of substitution and income effect. So, once we have role of substitution and income effects playing very important role, then these dimensions will come again. But the, the major uh, attraction of this particular understanding is that it helps you understand in a more deeper way your basic macroeconomics and this will give further provide you dimension to understand the certain theories, certain aspects of permanent income, relative income, all those theories will be coming up. So, and then we will be seeing also on the right aspect. Now, here we have the, so here we are now trying to see and work out with the dimension. So, here we have a consumer who is a lender. So, if I am saying lender means that he is having income, but he tries to save more. So, once he has the income, he is trying to save more. So, here it is the condition that so, the endowment point is E, right. So, his income is this much, right. He is saving only this much. So, A point which is tangent to this budget line. So, this is the budget line. This is your indifference curve. So, at point A, here you are consuming only C star and C star transpose. Your income is YT and YT minus 1, which means that this amount of income that you are saving, you can transfer that to future consumption and you will be, uh, you can see that the future consumption is increasing by a larger amount, right and this, this is what it leads to. So, for a lender, it becomes easier, uh, in this case, it becomes easier to understand if you are just focusing on the endowment point. So, this is his, his income, so current period income and the future period income. And this is the consumption that he has a current period and future period. So, with this adjustment, it plays very important role. Now, here we have a consumer who is a borrower. So, I think we also had focused on this aspect in the last session, where we had mentioned that if he is having the income of E, so here, here it is Y transpose minus T transpose. So, this is the future consumption, and here is the current income. He is consuming this much, which means that you are having only of income of 100 rupees, but you are consuming 200 rupees. So, the 100 rupees extra that you are consuming, it covers here. So, here it is y minus t and c star that you have. So, at point A, what do we infer? We infer that at this point, the consumer is a borrower. So, he is borrowing in the current period and then he is, has to pay back in the future period. So, this is the payback period and this is the borrowing period. So, this is what it, the analysis looks like here, right. So, this will be the amount that he is having in the future period and this is the amount he is going for consumption in the current period. Now, what happens when we have the increase in current income for, for the consumer? So, here we can see that current and future income increase, saving increases, the consumer acts to so, one of the beauties of this particular analysis is that here you have the consumer, we are trying to uh, trying to specify the strategies of the consumer, how this particular representative consumer will be smoothing out the consumption, which means that uh, given the economic scenarios that you are facing, so whether you have the future period income higher or the current period income lower, it will have the impact. So, here it is the consumer acts to smooth consumption over time. Now, the effects of increase in current income for a lender. So, here it is. So, here this is what we have the for the lender. So, if the current income of the lender is increasing, so here we can see that this is the original budget line of the representative consumer. This is the first endowment that he has how much is the income. So, this is the income, this is the consumption which means that he is saving some amount 
transferring it to future. So, if this amount is going to if this amount is going to be increased then he of course, he would like to move up. Now, his endowment since he is the current period income increasing. So, his endowment moves from E 1 to E 2. Now, at point E 2 you can see that this representative consumer is now having the consumption at point B and his consumption is increasing. So, he was earlier at E 1 consuming C 1, but now he is at E 2 consuming C 2 which means that this much amount of money he is saving and he, it can be transferred to the future consumption. So, once I have these two dimensions into account then it plays very important role because there you have the, the role of current and future, but here we can see that these two lines we are drawing. So, here this line is coming and then again we have the parallel move which means that the, the slope of the budget constraint remains same. So, 1 plus r remains same in the current and the future period. So, this is what it means about. So, if you have the current period income increasing, the consumption increases in both current period and the future period. This is partly because of the income effect that this representative consumer is seeing and we are not seeing any change in the interest rate. If we can infer upon any change in the interest rate, then it will play a very important role. So, here I hope it is clear that the movement. So, here you can think about E 1, E 1 is here, he is consuming only this much, which means that this amount is being saved. So, he is lender, so he can go for. So, this is what if he is seeing increase, so this will further uh, be repeated in the future period. So, here it is re getting repeated. So, here is at point E 2 and then here we have the consumption by this much amount. So, the amount of the consumption that you have here, this will have the, the, uh, uh, the effect on the future. So, Overall, the conclusion is that because of this current period income increase, since the slope of the budget line remains same, no change in the budget line slope. So, here you have the consumption moving from A to B. So, this analysis makes the overall understanding better about the current. Now, an increase in future income. So, an increase in future income, what do you do? When you go for increasing the future income, so you have that, you have the ability that suppose you are studying in your college and you are being placed. So, you are in your last semester and you have got the opportunity. You know that once you are, once you start your job, then your income, you are going to see increase in income because whatever income that you have uh, at present, it is going to add value. So, this is going to have the impact here. So, an increase in future income for the consumer. So, here it is. So, here once I am mentioning about, so you can see that uh, that this representative consumer will also have the similar movement because the budget line does not uh, change its slope. Once the budget line is not changing its slope, then it is obvious that this representative consumer will be having the increase in both period consumption. So, the, the, this is how it looks like. So, in both cases what happens that whether you talk about the increase in current income or you talk about the increase in future income, in both cases you have both current and future period income increasing. So, uh, current and future period income increasing as a result you have both current consumption and future consumption rising. Now, in most of the micro macro textbook you read about consumption theory, there you have the permanent income hypothesis by Modigliani and this permanent income hypothesis mentioned about how the, the representative consumer will decide about when whether his current or the future income or consumption is increasing or decreasing. So, if you are talking about the, if you just think about the temporary and permanent income, what do we mean by temporary and permanent income? Temporary income could be in the form of uh, some kind of, of short term, a very short term gain. Uh, maybe it, it could be that you won a lottery, maybe it could be that the government has given you a tax relief for in, in a budget year. So, maybe this year budget if it is going to be announced and you get the tax tax reliefs, then it is not guaranteed that this will continue even 
next year also and next year budget may continue the same kind of relief measures that you are experiencing uh, or going to experience in the coming budget. So, if you are thinking in that direction then the basic understanding is that given these two situations that we have that representative agent is going to get income in the current uh, or the for the very short term period and the permanent income means that this particular representative agent is employed and so maybe uh, 10, 15, 20 years whatever is the retirement age. So, he starts his journey at, at the age of 25 and then his retirement age is 60. So, whatever income he is going to get during this period that is called the permanent income right. So, and the temporary income I mentioned. So, I hope it is clear that what do you mean by temporary and permanent. So, temporary and permanent incomes also have implications on the current and future consumption. And the concept that we are going to see is about the as we mentioned about the smoothing of consumption. So, once I am mentioning about smoothing of consumption then this leads to how the representative agent is going to decide about uh, the consumption in current and future period given these situations about the income. So, let us talk about that. Permanent increase in income will have a larger effect on the lifetime wealth than a temporary increase and there will be a larger effect on current consumption. So, this is what we experience. A consumer will tend to save most of the purely temporary increase why we are arguing on these two lines because the as I mentioned about the budget. So, everyone has some kind of learning experience. So, based on the past and this is also linked to some extent with the taxation strategy that we have that we will be discussing after this that is called the Ricard and equivalence and in that we always try to smooth out the uh, their individuals try to smooth out the burden of tax uh, by adjusting the current period and future period consumption. And in most cases it, uh, it has been examined and it has been proved by most of the uh, most of the researchers that these researchers uh, so temporary increase in income is being saved in most of the cases either you take one or two. So, this uh, is the case that we deal. Now, let us uh, see that whether we can understand in a much better context. So, here it is the if we are going to talk about the current period. So, let us so, so individual is here he is also going for the um, the increase in the in, in the period here. So, if I am going to See, see the increase in the current period consumption. So, for example, here we see here this is what he consumes right. So, if he is at this point consuming this much because of this the temporary increase his consumption level moves from E to D right. But here you can see that the change in this income that we are see, the current period consumption that we are seeing it is less than the future period consumption which means that the individuals to some extent tries to save some amount. So, here you can see this particular uh, gap is much larger than this right. But if you think about the permanent increase then the permanent increase we are seeing a consistent rise. So, here we are seeing that the the current period temporary period uh, the, uh, the, the consumption what we are inferring here the gap is much smaller than here, then this shows that some amount of the income that he has received as a, as a temporary increase in income it has been saved in the current period and it is being used in the future. So, that is what we try to understand with the temporary and permanent income that temporary income increase will have the consumption increase, but it will not be as much as we are seeing in at point k. At point k we are seeing that it is not increasing that much. Uh, so, so, the consumption has increased substantially. The future income is also increased. So, here in both cases we are seeing the increase and we can see that from C2 to C3 the jump is much larger right compared to what we see here. So, we can easily say that from C1 to C3 the impact is more or less smooth right in the same amount it is going. But when we are seeing the temporary increase then this, this temporary increase is having a lot of role to play. This temporary increase it means that some amount of this income that this representative agent is going to have it is being transferred to the future period. So, overall what it, it means that the representative agent is also rational 
this representative agent whether he or she knows about the, the movement, how to smooth out consumption. So, in most of the cases if you are uh, and that is why governments do not go for promoting a lottery win or any kind of lottery system because they know that this is not going to uh, give the permanent boost in income. Uh, otherwise, instead of uh, instead of creating employment, governments would have gone for simply uh, lottery system that if you won the lottery it is more than enough for you to survive. They go for creation of employment because creation of employment creates permanent income kind of scenarios and this is having a more positive impact on the economy compared to a temporary. Similarly, in the policy setup also, in the policy setup also when government goes for decreasing the tax then you should be ready that in future you are going to pay a higher tax because government will simply transfer the wealth from current period to future period or from from the future to the, the further next period if you are going to see the more than two period scenario. So, there it helps. So, government will also go for adjustment in the tax structure, adjustment in the income generating sources in the same way that we have for the all other schemes. So, I hope it is clear to all of you. So, we will also discuss to uh, in the next session we will be also discussing about how certain dimensions of the representative consumer is going to work more in favor of the current and future period consumptions and how we can decide further about the changes in such framework. So, what happens when we are going to see the change in the interest rate, how the interest rate change is going to play an important role. Can we also add the dimension of borrower and lender? Then we will see that how we can see the how we can add the dimension of uncertainty, we can also see that how we can generalize the budget constraint in a more general context, how we can extend the two period consumption into infinite. So, those things are important to note and I am stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much.